in a series that I'm simply calling Reboot. And uh, uh, how many of you know things go wrong with electronics? <laughs> you know, your phone, your laptop, your TV, your smart TV, your internet. It's necessary to reboot all of those electronics. And, you know, it's an amazing thing that happens, right? When, when you do that, because all of a sudden, things start working again. It's kind of like a miracle, all right? And uh, today, I want to talk to you about how to reboot your faith. So maybe you entered 2020. On a high level, your faith is just screaming out. You're, you're just as alive in Jesus as you've ever been. You're full of hope. Uh, but maybe you entered 2020 and you're struggling a little bit. And I'll tell you, even people who are spiritual people who know the Word sometimes need to have their faith rebooted in a sense. And so I want to tell you a story of a great leader today. Many years ago, uh, a young Midwestern lawyer suffered from such deep depression that his friends thought it best to keep all of the knives and the razors out of his room. How many of you know he was really down? He was questioning his life's calling and wondered if it was even worth attempting to follow it through. And during this time, he wrote these words from his, in his journal. He said, I am now the most miserable man living. Whether I shall ever be better, I cannot tell. I fear I shall not. That man, believe it or not, was Abraham Lincoln. He was at the lowest point in his life. He needed encouragement. His faith in God and his faith in himself had crashed. And, uh, but, but somehow, from somewhere, Abraham Lincoln received the encouragement that he needed. And his achievements in life uh, thoroughly vindicated his bout that he had with discouragement. But I wonder today what it was that helped him to overcome those sen that sense of, of despair and, and discouragement that he must have felt as he wrote those words. Uh, he never wrote about that in any of his journals. It's really unknown how he came out of that. But what we do know is that around that time that Abraham Lincoln stayed in the home of a lady by the name of Lucy Gilman Speed, who was known to be a very devout Christian. Perhaps it was her encouragement that allowed his faith to be in and as we're going to say, rebooted. So I want to talk to you today about how to reboot your faith, all right? And so let me ask you a very personal question today. You don't need to answer it except in your own mind and in your own heart. How is your faith level as you enter 2020? It's a very important question, and I, I wonder if somehow during a conversation between Abraham Lincoln and, and this lady by the name of Lucy, if she didn't say, Mr. Lincoln, how is your faith doing? And he had to question that and think about that. And, and, I, I, and it's, there's nothing more important in the life of a believer or in a, a group of believers than the level of faith that we have. Come on. And uh, as I look at this chapter, I love this chapter because for me it reveals the heart of a pastor towards his flock, okay? The Apostle Paul had founded this church in Thessalonica. By the way, we're in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. I didn't mention that yet. But uh, he, he's been very concerned about how they're doing spiritually. This was a brand new, brand new group of believers, a new church plant. And interestingly enough, as Paul writes his letter to the church at Thessalonica, he never asked this question, well, you know, uh, you know, how are the finances of the church? And is the church growing? Uh, are new people coming? He never asked any of those questions. But instead, what he did was he inquired about the faith of the people. When most of us think about how someone is doing spiritually, uh, you know, on an individual level, we often think of just surface things. We zero in on behavior patterns. We say, ask ourselves, you know, if we're giving ourselves, you know, thinking about our lives, we think, well, how am I doing at work? Or, you know, how is my health? Or am I staying true in my marriage and in my thoughts and my mind, you know? And, and so when it comes to how someone is doing spiritually, we often think of how they're doing in an outward sense, you know, are they smiling? Are they, do they, do 
they look okay. But we forget that there's really a deeper spiritual factor that goes on on the inside of someone. And that spiritual factor is known as faith. And Paul had this concern about how was their faith because he knew that if their faith was okay, if their trust in the Lord was okay, if their confidence in the King of Kings and Jesus Christ was okay, that they were going to be okay. And what's interesting is that Paul doesn't automatically assume that just because a person is a Christian that their faith is all right, right? He didn't assume that they're automatically walking in some, you know, powerful faith. And so let me just read a few verses out of 1 Thessalonians today. How many of you are with me? Wave at me. Okay. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Uh, Paul was so concerned, he sent one of his uh, young men, Timothy, to help them. And he said, we sent Timothy to strengthen and encourage you in your faith. How many of you know that every single believer, including Pastor Bob, including, you know, the late Billy Graham, we all need to be encouraged in our faith. Come on. And it says in 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 5, he says, for this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent Timothy to find out about your faith. Now, when Green and I you know, visit someone in the hospital or if someone has suffered a loss or of a job or even a pet or, or you know, or even, you know, a loss of a loved one, you know, we, we often call them or visit them. And, and what we always do is this. We ask them, how are you doing? And we want to hear them talk, right? How many of you know it's important to let people get their story out? Because when people tell their story, you can also discern their level of faith in that. How many of you know I'm telling you the truth, right? And, 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 uh, and their, their words are going to reveal their faith level. And fortunately, in this case, as Timothy went, he was able to bring back a really positive report to Paul. Hey, their faith is doing great. And then Paul says this in 1 Thessalonians 3, 7. He says, therefore, brothers, in all our distress and persecution he says we were encouraged with, about your about you because of your faith now how many of you realize that that did not mean for these believers in Thessalonica uh, Thessalonica excuse me that all the outward circumstances had changed for them right in fact the, the scripture tells us here that they were under some pretty intense persecution Outward circumstances in your life, hear me, are not nearly as important as what's going on down on the inside of your heart, right? Uh, your job may be giving you grief. That client you may have might be acting like the devil himself, right? You, you know, you might be having grief with someone in your life. But, but let me tell you, if your faith is okay, you're going to hold up well. In fact, that is the thing that spiritual leaders often fight for, is that people's faith would be strengthened and encouraged. And Paul said this in 1 Thessalonians 3.10. He says, night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. How many of you realize that a true spiritual leader is always going to bring encouragement? Come on. A true spiritual leader is going to speak words that bring faith and courage to people because a, a, a leader knows that it doesn't take much ne negativity, much criticism, much doubt, and people's faith begin to, begins to, and people can begin to crumble. And you say, well, Pastor, why did Paul put such an emphasis on faith? Because he understood what we have often forgot is that when people begin to, to struggle in their walk with the Lord, when they fall into depression and discouragement, when they get down, it could be very well be that their faith has been crumbling underneath them. When a marriage crumbles, when a family fight uh, occurs, when someone starts drinking again after years of sobriety, we, we shake our head and we think, oh, you know, maybe the stresses of life got back to that person. But maybe it was something that was lacking in their faith. Come on. And, and, uh, and so I just want to ask you today, where is your faith level at as you begin 2020? Amen. I tell you, God wants to encourage it today. He wants you to leave here today with your faith strong and beliefs powerful, trusting in the Lord that God is with you. Come on. How many of you know if the Lord is with you, you're going to be all right? If Jesus is with you, you're going to be all right. If you stand upon the promises of God, let the winds do whatever they want. Let the waves splash up against you. But at 
the end, you're going to be standing with your feet firmly planted, your shield of faith up, and you're going to be all right marching forward. Come on, give Jesus a big hand of praise today. You say, well, Pastor, how do I know? Give me some indicators that my faith could be weak. I mean, here's some indicators. You're, what if, if your prayer life is practically non-existent? It's an indicator that your faith is weak because you're saying to yourself, I really don't believe that God answers prayer. Oh my, getting quiet in here. Amen. Right? Uh, you know, if, do you find yourself in worry? How many know that worry, in a sense, is a lack of faith? You're saying, I can't really trust God. You know, I'm gonna, I think I'll, I'll just take this on myself and worry about it. If you find yourself full of stress, you know, could it be that you're just, you're just, you just aren't sure that God is big enough that He really has you, right? Uh, maybe you feel like escaping. That's a common thing that people go through. They feel like escaping, and some people do it, you know, just by sitting in front of the television for hours and hours. Other people do it in many, many different kinds of ways. But tell you it could be that you're just trying to escape the reality because you're worried you're stressed out about you know what's going to happen if you find yourself being negative all right i pray that there's not a negative word spoken here today come on because we have a positive god come on all the promises are yay and amen but when you're negative you're constantly assuming that the worst is going to happen you're living in fear do you live in fear these are all signs that perhaps your faith is not not at the level where it needs to be. You need a faith reboot. Come on. You need to pray like the disciples did to Jesus when they said, Oh, Lord, increase our faith. Come on. How many of you believe that God wants His church walking in faith, walking in victory, trusting in the Lord? Amen. And the, and the, the sad part is that when your faith is so low, it's really hard to get a praise out. Come on. It's hard to worship God when you're, when you're stressed out and you're worried. But when you have faith, you realize that your praise, amen, that's just, that's just an expression of what's down on the inside of you. 